Hello everyone, Kevin Stevenson here with GetMeTheGeek.com and today we're going to talk about Omada, TP-Link's new uh, software-defined network stuff that's uh, basically meant to compete with uh, Ubiquity if you ask me. So I'm going to check this out and what we have today is um, I've got this, which is the controller. I'll zoom that in there for you. Yep. Okay. And then I've got a VPN router. All right. And then we also have one of their Wi-Fi access points. So we're gonna take those and we're gonna hook them up today and see how this works, walk you through it, uh, take a look at the user interface and all that stuff. So uh, let's get started. All right, here we go. Boom. Okay, so let me just open this up here. Here is the TP-Link website, Mata. Um, let me just get rid of all this crap here in a way. Okay, so what it is, is their business offering. We're gonna just scroll down here and look at this web page a little bit. And um, this is what you're interested in. So we see here where we have uh, the controller, we have switches, we have uh, firewalls, you can do the cloud access. You can also, there's a software version and they have the Wi-Fi access points. So I have one of the Wi-Fi access points, one of the gateways, one of the controllers. All right. So if you're going to take a look at this software and you want to um, pick it out, you can click on their website and pick all of the software. So we go over here to the gateways. Right now they have two different gateways, this, this 7206 and the 605. Now what I got is the 605 and then in the controller side, you have a couple different controllers. Number one, there's a cloud-based one, so you can you can pay to have that hosted. Or and number two, you can have the you can host it yourself. And then there's two hardware versions. So we got the uh, C2 200 in our operation today. And then over here in the access points, what I've chosen is the 1750. Um, Yeah, so let's see which is the EAP245. So this is what I've chosen for this one. Uh, it's Wi-Fi 5, AC. Um, they do have Wi-Fi 6. I just didn't happen to grab one of those when I uh, ordered this. So here's your Wi-Fi 6 operate versions. So, okay. Now, that being said, let's just go ahead and look at some of the other proper properties. So they have basically, like I said, if you're comparing this to uh, Ubiquity, they they pretty much match stuff. Like, you know, Ubiquity has these wall mount ones. Um, there's this outdoor EAP 110 that looks strikingly identical. Um, so I don't know if if they're using the same manufacturers on the back end or something, or, or what if they just straight up copied, who knows? Um, uh, TP Link did not pay for me for pay for any of this. Did not send anything. So this I got because I am going to test it out and send it out to one of my clients. So I'm going to pause this and we'll be back once I get it set up. Okay, so here we go. Now I have got the, everything plugged in, and let me just switch over here to what we have. So first thing is first is once I got connected. I did a scan of the network and what I have is this 0 0.1, the 0 0.161 and 0 0.194 and then my computer. All right. So what I've done here is I open up each one of these pages. So 0 0.1 is the router. That's the ER605. Now you can control this um, via just standalone. So you don't have to have the Omada controller. And then second, the 161 is the Omada controller. And then third, is the EAP 245, which can all be controlled manually too. So, but that's not what we're gonna do here today. What we're gonna do is we're gonna walk through this. So let's get started on the controller. So boom, here's what we have. Nice little setup. And basically it's gonna set your controller name, do all this uh, time zone. So we are in uh, central time zone here and uh, we're going to just keep that controller name. That's totally fine. You can you can change it to whatever you want. And then select what you're going to do. 
hotel, restaurant, office, factory, home, hospital, campus, dormitory, shopping, airport, what are customized? Okay. So we're going to just going to choose office here. And we'll go through this just like it's a home office selection. So that being said, it's already sees the two devices that I have. One is the, the Wi-Fi access point and the other one is the controller. So we're going to check both of those guys and because uh, you select the ones you want to configure. Well, let's go ahead and hit next. And then we're going to give an SSID. So we're going to call this YouTube get me the geek and then we're going to call they get the password called get me geek. so just going to put that in there we're not going to turn on the guest wi-fi but uh, all you do is flip that switch there if we wanted to we're going to go ahead next controller administrative name so we're going to go ahead and do that um, so i'm going to fill this out and then I'm going to um, hit next, but I'm gonna do that off screen. Actually, um, I can do this just fine like this. So we're gonna put in the administrative name. You don't have to put an email in there because uh, that's just optional. And then I'm gonna uncheck this because I don't want to uh, bind this to my TP link account. So go ahead and hit next. And so here's what we have. And then we're gonna hit finish. And so what it's gonna do now is it's, it, it's gonna push it out. So we're gonna go ahead and log in. And boom, here it is, it's loading everything up. So this is overview. It's going to show you what all the uh, basically just you know, give you a tutorial of what's going on. So feel free to read through this. But basically, you got the left hand side, um, which is all the system monitoring and, and kind of your navigation and then site map. So you can actually change and have multiple sites managed by this controller and then account information here. So we're going to get next on that again. See, this is site one through four. You can see that in this video in this tutorial. And now they're just zooming in the search stuff. Um, I'm going to go through this pretty quickly because you'll be able to go through this, changing your, your password, account management, and uh, VLAN setup, NAT rules, and all that good stuff. And then, boom, finish the tutorial, and it's configuring your network. Okay, so let's take a look. Here we go. Go over here to devices, and we're going to see our devices right here, right? Dashboard again. So we switch back to that. Um, there's some information log here. Now just remember, you keep patient with this as it goes through, because this is a little device. It's you know switching back and forth is going to be slow. Um, statistics. So you can come take a look at this stuff. Map. I always find this interesting. Um, it gives you the topology automatically, which is really nice because you have the internet, you have your WAN connection, your Wi-Fi, your modern controller, and then the computers. Now, if you had a switch, you'd, you'd have that in there too. Now, I'm just using the controller as a switch too because it has a couple ports and that's plenty for what we're doing here. And then you can click on individual devices and see information. So you see the, the Wi-Fi information, the client, all that good stuff, tools, configuration, mesh, clients. So if you have clients connected, they'll be in here too. Okay. You flip to a map. So if you want to upload your image to your office and put the devices in there, you can do that. You just kind of drag them in there like so, and then it'll put them in there. Okay. Again, we'll go down to clients. It's going to show the controller and the computer insights. 
this isn't really useful at this moment time, but you can see port forwarding statuses, switch status, all that VPN status, log. Um, so it's going to see the WAN is down. And you got admin, you got settings. So setting is where you're going to get a lot of your stuff that you need to do. Um, the site information, all this is here, the wired networks. So by default, it's going to be a zero, a 192.168.0 network. So if you go over here, you can configure the ports on the uh, WAN side. And then set the dynamic connection or static, depending on what you have. Um, so if you go to the LAN side over here, so now we're in the LAN side. And so this is where you can configure your LAN. You go here to actions. And this is where you set up the LAN, VLANs, which ports are going to be on the LAN interfaces, uh, what your VLAN IDs are, uh, your basic network, your DHCP ranges, and all this good stuff here. You also have advanced DHCP, so if you need that option 66, um, which can be used for um, things like VoIP phones and things like that, and a couple other things. So lots of options here. Wireless networks. This is where you're going to configure your wireless SSID. If you need to change it later after that first initial day, you have the SSID and everything. You just edit there, change your SSID. You can turn off 2.4, turn off 5 gig. Uh, if you want to, you can enable guest network here. They have nice, helpful little hints. Um, you, you can choose your uh, security. And then all you have the advanced stuff. So now, moving along to network security, we have quite a few things in here. So um, we'll just look at the URL filtering real quick. So you can add policies here. Uh, attack defense. Um, so there's several things in here that are there to protect you. Firewall rules. Um, so if you want to go in here to to uh, set up these sort of things, you can do that. Um, transmission routing, NAT, VPN. VPN is a very important one. So if you want to go in here and you want to add uh, a VPN server, VPN users, I'm just going to click on this real quick, get a new policy, client to site. And so your options are um, from the server side, you get a L L2TP, PPTP, which you don't want to use, IPsec and OpenVPN. So I'm going to recommend that everybody use OpenVPN to start off. It's great. Um, you can use, use the UDP and configure this way. We're not going to do that in this tutorial. I'm just kind of going over the basics of what's in here. Um, so we'll hit cancel on that. And uh, services. Uh, so DynDNS. So if you have a dynamic WAN IP address, you can use set up DynDNS to uh, get your get your your DNS updated. That's a very important if you're hosting or you want to do VPN and or you're hosting some services on your home network or your, your business network and you don't have a static IP address. So that's that's that. Now we go back over here to the controller and this is information about the controller, um, what its IP address is. I recommend that that you you set up a static IP address for it. And so all this good stuff. Cloud access, this is where you can turn on the cloud access. Um, to remotely access and manage this. Maintenance. Here we go. Migrations. Auto backups. So this is pretty cool. All right, so first things first. Really what you're going to end up doing is, is wanting to look at your devices and seeing if they're up to date. Anyway, you want to be on the config side. Um, but here's your versions itself. And here's a little button that says check for updates. Cloud access not enabled, so it can't check for updates. Well, that's a problem. 
So I guess you have to go enable cloud access in order to check for updates. Now, if you remember, that's over here. And boom, enter an email address password to do that. So I'm going to blank this out and go ahead and, and do that. All right, now I have the cloud access enabled. So if you go down here to maintenance again, and you scroll down to the bottom, you're going to see check for upgrade and you're going to see the upgrade in there. So that is there. And then if you go to devices here, now that you have it enabled, so you'll go in here and you'll see that uh, new firmware is available on the devices. So you can go and check for updates. You click this upgrade, click this upgrade, and then that will push down the upgrades to everything. So uh, I recommend that once you have this up, that way you can keep everything up to date and that'll be good. So you can hit this start, this rolling upgrade, and that will update all the, all the devices as you go through. So, and that's how you update. Okay, it's that simple to get this going. All right, so I'm Kevin Stevenson with GiveMeTheGeek.com, and this has been a brief tutorial on getting the TP-Link Omada up and running. Um, it's basically plug everything in, find the IP address of the controller, walk through the wizard, and then you've got everything you need to do. Now, I recommend, uh, you know, going ahead and, and setting up the cloud access and TP-Link uh, so that you can do all the features. See you next time.